Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. My name is Roger Connolly. I'm the Director of Pre-Sales at Style Labs. And here I'm going to take you through the Marketing Content Hub to understand how we can use the Marketing Content Hub to manage your content cre creation lifecycle from beginning to end. Um, today, to, to demonstrate the product, we're going to use a fictitious um, lemonade brand. Um, and the goal of this demo is to walk through the concept of bringing these products to market um, using the Marketing Content Hub. Um, we'll zoom in on the first two stages of this project, which is the completeness of product content um, and also additional content creation to support the launch. We've got a number of different personas, and we'll first start off with Frank. Uh, Frank is the product manager, and he's going to log into the system um, and start to prepare for the product launch. So Frank logs into the system, and he knows that since the products already exist in our product information management module, or PIM, um, he can log into the application um, and see more information about the products uh, that are being managed in the platform. Um, so as you can see, the product is available in a number of different SKUs, um, both in orange, lime, and lemon flavors, as well as you can see all the branded assets um, and content that's available for this product. He can select all of the product SKUs um, that he wants to feature in this new launch, um, and he can add to a clipboard, and then he can use that to bring that into his new um, campaign. So as he steps over into the project workflow, he can create, he can also see all of the campaign overviews on a calendar view and also in a list view, as well as create a new campaign um, from a template to start a new product range campaign. He'll give it a name and a start date, and then begin the project. As you can see, he goes into the project. There's already a number of activities that are already available, and he can now start and initiate the project. The first step in the workflow is the concept and briefing stage. He can go into the concept and briefing stage, and now he can add the products that he's copied from his clipboard. From here, Frank can select the products that he wants to um, send to the copywriter. And so he can send the copywriter, Tom DeRitter, um, a set of products um, to actually allow them to edit the actual content of the new products. So the next step in the process is Tom is going to log in. He is the copywriter. And he is going to go to his tasks overview page. And this will bring him to his task dashboard, where he can see the tasks that have been assigned to him. He can click into the task and see the products that have been attached from the previous step. And he can accept that task and start to interact with that content. So the first step um, is to um, go into each of the products um, and add recipes. Um, so we also have recipes being managed in the platform as well. Um, so he can find related content and relate that product to that um, related recipe, uh, as well as he can enrich the product description um, with um, more romantic um, marketing content, such as the copy description. He can continue doing that for all of the products in his task. So in this case, the lime product is featured in multiple recipes and already has a description, so he can move on. And finally, the lemon, the lemon flavored soft drink is, is given a description as well. We can also do a mass edit um, of the actual products and edit them in a table view. And so we can make mass changes to the entire set of products using a, a table view. Um, and we can add a value to a specific record in the table and then drag that value down to subsequent records in the table. So we can very quickly mass edit a large set of data. As you can see underneath the lemonade, we can go and see more information about the product itself, um, such as full GS1 descriptive content. This is being pulled from the GS1 schema, and so we can further attribute the product um, to meet the GS1 standards. So we can say that this is a lime product uh, that is um, not in diet um, and is also with fruit and, and other attributes. And then once, once the task is completed, um, the copywriter can provide the feedback and then complete the task. So moving on, the next stage in the workflow is that the 
product owner is going to now review um, the content that's been added by the copywriter. Uh, so they can go back um, to the task overview page. Um, and here, instead of looking at tasks that are assigned to him, um, Frank can look for tasks that he has created himself. So he can see an overview of the tasks. He sees that the task has been completed by the copywriter. And he can go in and re review the content that has been added to, um, to each of the products. He can go into an annotation screen to actually provide annotation markup um, on a PDF um, that's been created from the provided, provided content. And he notices that the, out, the product shot that's been added is a bit, a bit outdated, um, so that needs to be um, changed, uh, as well as he doesn't like the description that has been provided in the, in the headline. He can take that single, singular product and send a specific task back to the copywriter uh, to review the annotations and make corrections. So now Tom, the copywriter, can look, log back into the system, and now he sees that he has a new task that's been assigned to him to review the content that's provided, and you can see that only the orange lemonade has been sent to his to his task list. He can accept the task, and now he can review the annotations that have been provided by, by the product manager. So he can use the tools on the left to visualize the annotations, and now he can go in and change the marketing description that he had been previously provided. As well as update the relevant product asset um, that has been attached to the product itself. So he can upload a new file uh, to the system from his desktop. He can drag and drop that directly from his desktop. And that will version out the asset that's in the system. He's also provided the ability to compare previous versions, so he can view them side by side um, with a slider that allows him to drag over um, the comparison asset to see the visual differences between them. And once he's made those changes, the task can be considered complete and he can go about his day. So now at this stage, the concept and briefing stage is completed, and now we move on to stage two, which is content creation. And this is where we might want to create a hero image of the um, specific launch. So once Frank completes the concept and briefing activity, the subsequent activity content creation can now begin, and this happens automatically, and the three products that we've completed in step one are now available in step two um, for additional content creation. So Extra content can be gathered for the brief, so now we go into the digital asset management system, and we can now um, search for content um, based on facets. Um, we can see a full page preview of the image itself. We can page through the various search results. Um, if we'd like, we can view more details about the asset itself. As you can see here, we also have auto tags that have been provided by artificial intelligence, uh, being tagged directly by the Vision API of Microsoft Azure. We can use that content to then find specific results. Um, so with a full text search, uh, we can find this picture of an orange tree. And I can see that there are specific rights usage available to me on that asset. I can see that this can be used um, for the next three years in digital uh, across the globe. So I know that this is something I can use now in my new project. Um, so again, I can add this to my clipboard and I can bring this into my project and provide it to um, to the designer for the creation of a new campaign asset. So I add that back um, to my project. I can also add a new fragment of text. Um, I can do this in multiple languages. Here I'll do it in English. Um, and this is a headline piece of text that we want to um, add to the new composite asset. I could send the text, the, the text fragment and the asset to Elisa, who is the designer. Um, and here I'm going to send her an upload files task, which would allow her temporarily to upload assets into the system. I 
can also check the include all deliverables and also set the status and priority of the task itself to say that this is a high priority task uh, that needs attention um, quickly. So Eliza Webb is the designer. Um, now she's going to log into the system again and also go to her task overview page. And she's going to filter on the task list to see those tasks that have been assigned to her. And she sees that she's got a task to create a new piece of content. Uh, and as you can see, she's got all of the components that have been provided um, from the um, product manager, um, the products themselves, as well as the textual content and also the hero image. So she can go in and see uh, more details about the um, asset itself. And from clicking this link here, she can use a direct drag and drop to place this asset directly into InDesign. So this is her design application of choice. And so without having to um, download this asset out of the system, she can drag and drop and place it directly into InDesign. She can also review the individual products themselves and grab the um, product images for each of those assets in a similar fashion and drag them into InDesign to build her new asset. So she can place the orange, the lemon, the lime, and the lemonade. As you can see, they're initially placed in low resolution um, to support a true FPO workflow. Um, but if she needs to exchange those with high resolution assets for print and packaging, um, she can do so as well. She can also go in and see the headline copy, and that can be also then um, pasted into their InDesign document um, and then styled with additional styling information. Once a composite asset is completed, um, that can be also then uploaded directly into um, the platform as a component of the project. Once she's completed the task, um, that will then get rounded back to the product manager. So Frank can now log back into the system once again and now review the new asset that has been created uh, by Elisa. And as she reviews the asset, she notices two things about the asset. Um, she wants to touch up a blemish on the actual leaf um, that's provided in the asset, as well as remove the hand and the orange because she feels that the, the asset is a little bit too busy and is cluttering up um, the messaging. So the annotations can be made um, directly on the asset itself. And here she can send a task back to the designer to let her know that there's some annotations on the artwork. So now Elisa can come back into the system um, and review those annotations, um, again by going to her task overview page. She can see that there are two annotations on that asset. And she can also toggle on the visual cues to see um, what each annotation refers to on the physical asset. So now she knows she needs to make two changes to the asset itself. One is to remove the hand and the orange, and also to remove the blemish. So she can go in and um, create a new version of the asset uh, by checking the asset out of the system. So checking out will temporarily lock this file and allow Elisa to work on this asset um, while um, the asset still remains in the system, but it's in a, in a draft form. So Lisa can open up Photoshop to modify the asset um, using the tools of her choice. Um, and she will use Photoshop to go in and actually mask out the um, hand and the apple, as well as uh, address the blemish situation on the leaf, um, and then save that asset back, and then check that back into the system. So she can go into her checkouts area. She can see both the original and the newly created asset um, in her checkouts, 
and then she can check those assets back in. And that will version the asset um, back into the system just as if she were to upload it natively in the platform. So now that doesn't address the entire problem because the original file itself, uh, the InDesign file still has the old version. But as you can see, InDesign is aware that the file has been modified. So she can, without logging into the, into the Marketing Content Hub platform, um, InDesign will make her aware that the changes is, is, uh, is available and then she can upload it directly um, in the InDesign document. And now the new derivative asset is um, then uploaded into the system and Elisa can also compare her changes uh, from one asset to, uh, to the new asset. And now Elisa can then complete her task and let everybody know that the background has been corrected. So now once again, um, the product manager can go in and review um, the updated hero image. And validate that it is completed. He sees that those changes have been made. But before he moves on, he's going to look at the timeline view to check the legal review task. Um, and this task is set up to specially um, especially to auto-fire um, the task when an activity begins. And what this allows us to do is set a task to be set later, um, but auto-fire when, when an activity begins, and then auto-finish an activity when the task is completed. And this allows us to create automated workflows um, that basically allow tasks to kind of automate processes through a set stage, um, stages of workflow. So Tim Goodman in legal, can now review his tasks. And his goal is really just to validate the legal requirements of the asset itself, in which case he doesn't have much feedback here. And he's going to just um, review very quickly and approve the asset um, for global use. And so he's got icons available to very quickly set the approval status of the asset and click done. And now this is. Um, considered approved um, for more for broader use uh, within the organization. So because that task was an auto task, you'll notice that when Frank logs back into the system, the finalized kit and delivers activity has already begun uh, because the legal review is, had opened and closed based on the task behavior. And so the final step of this workflow for the product manager is to send this asset to the dam and now this can be used by others within the, within the platform. So we can consider his, his project done. It will set the total completion of the project to 100%. But he's also created a collection of assets um, for this particular launch. And he can now take that finished asset and paste it into the collection. And now this collection can be made available and hold a wide variety of content assets specific to this launch. So there's video assets that can be previewed in the platform, um, documents, other images, and other relevant content types that might be created um, to support this launch. And as you can see, the collection can also be published on the homepage um, to provide users of quick access to, to the content.